Welcome to Decanic. In this video, we're going to take a look at three most common causes that trigger that malfunction, aromatic malfunction on the instrument cluster as you drive. So we're going to specifically focus on the cases where uh, the error is not there when you start driving, but after you drive for about five or ten minutes, that error uh, pops up. And that error I might just say, show that symbol that you see right there, or it might say air suspension malfunction on the S classes. This is a GL, but well, the system is really uh, designed the, the same. Um, if you got air suspension, now this is not really going to apply to those that have ABC suspension or hydraulic suspension. Um, and that's those those are more rare, but the air suspension is pretty common on the GLs, MLs, um, some E classes, S classes, and, and so on. So why does that come up? So there's three common issues, and we're going to go over all those three, and we're going to also go over how you can actually troubleshoot that error yourself. So let's take a look. So one of the uh, reasons is that the air compressor, this is the air compressor that builds a pressure to raise the vehicle, is getting weak. So a lot of times you might think that the compressor is fine because you can hear it uh, work. This makes noise when, when it's working, when it engages. But the problem is this piston inside has, this air compressor has a little piston inside that has rings on the compressor and on that little piston as it moves back and forth those rings wear out so as you reaching maybe a hundred thousand miles or something like that the compressor is not building enough pressure required to raise the car so um, so it, it might be a little bit tricky because you might think like well my car is at the right level but the problem is that this has got a built enough pressure in a short period of time if it's taken longer than that you might still raise the car but that malfunction is going to be there because it, it just the car is designed to to build the compressor is designed to build that in a specific time if it's taking longer than that you're going to end up with that error and again the car might ride and drive fine but it's a matter of time before the compressor uh, completely fails and does not and no longer raises the car here another problem is that um, right here on the back this is a uh, air release valve so right here uh, if the car has built is raised too much and it needs to lower uh, for example sometimes when you press a raise vehicle but uh, not necessarily you don't even have to press that button uh, the car might have raised and might need to lower itself it doesn't release air all the time but when it tries to release air and the system cannot release air then you end up with the error in there on the instrument cluster and that's why you might end up with an error 5, 10, 15 or half an hour later because like I said this the system doesn't need to release air very frequently but then when it tries to do it and it cannot do it then it throws up the malfunction on the instrument cluster and then the third problem is that a lot of times there's a leak either in the airbags or one of the lines it could be a very small leak the compressor is working fine but it's trying to build pressure and if it's not building enough pressure and keeping that enough pressure in the system it tries several times this compressor really works over time and then sometimes you might end up with a compressor cooling down error on this instrument cluster so that's another indication there's just a leak in the system and the compressor cannot keep up with that leak uh, so you need to get that addressed so those are the three problems compressor air release valve these are one unit so you might just um, replace it all at once or you might have a leak so how do you find out well let's take a look at that so you can use the Ucanic scanner this is a scanner you can rent or purchase but you go to diagnostics and select Mercedes and then you can manually select the model or you can just do smart van it'll pick up the correct model for you and it'll load the correct software for that vehicle you're working on So if it's not reading the VIN, there is an issue there, but most of the times it's going to read that. So you go to control units and go to chassis, suspension system, sometimes you might say aromatic. You read the codes and then you can see we have two codes. The correction time when filling is too long. So that could be the air compressor itself or it could be a leak that's causing the air compressor to work over time. Um, 
and then the value, uh, the signal values of the level sensor are implausible. This looks like there's two different issues, and sometimes there could be, but first you want to address this. Even though it's stored in all the current issue, um, you want to address this code first because um, what that's saying is the air compressor is trying to fill out the system. It's either air compressor is weak or there's a leak. But once the, uh, the, the malfunction comes on your instrument cluster, what happens is the suspension goes in uh, emergency mode. Uh, that's why your, your car probably is driving really rough and stiff and it's bouncy. Uh, and, and the vehicle um, might, a lot of times will drop, but sometimes it will not drop, but it might still be stiff. But what happens during that time is that those level sensors are not reading the correct values. So that's why you might have this coda here. So we don't want to address that, even though typically you want to address codes that are current first. In this case, you want to address this air compressor taking too long. Once that's addressed, once you have no leaks, once you have a good air compressor, then you see if this code will still be current. Because that what will happen is that code will probably um, change from current to just stored, and then you can clear it at that time because the level sensors might, will be operating within range. So keep that in mind. That can be a little bit tricky. Uh, um, troubleshooting aromatic system. Sometimes it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can go to live data here, and you can see a lot of uh, values and pressure. Let me see something. Battery voltage status of control unit. Level calibration completely. Yes. Lock position off. Level sensors. You can see the voltages of the level sensors. Uh, value of the pressure sensors, we saw that. Um, compressor, not locked. Um, actual values via can. This is more things about doors and steering angle sensor. Uh, aromatic central reservoir filling valve. Aromatic pressure relief valve. Damping valve units, light from so right front, and then level control valves, left front, and so on. So you can do those, and then you can also do active tests. You can do things like um, activate the air compressor and fill, um, move the vehicle towards a recommended level move towards calibrated vehicle level or you can fill individual struts if you're um, trying to figure out if you have a leak but this is important to do some troubleshooting because you don't want to replace parts now we we'll even see it where um, car owners even take cars to the dealerships and they like to replace one part after another sometimes that can be really tricky to diagnose um, but it's not something that you cannot diagnose yourself you can very easily diagnose your aromatic. There's a lot of information online. There's a lot of replacement parts. You don't have to spend $1,000 to replace an airbag or an air compressor. You can easily do it yourself. Um, the other thing is that it, it can be expensive to troubleshoot your Mercedes, but you can't. what you can do is you can either purchase or even rent the Ucanic scanner. You can rent it for half the price of what you'll pay to diagnose your car um, at a dealership or at a mechanic. And we'll mail this to you and have it mail it back, prepaid mail, mail back label, um, and you can diagnose your car. You can actually use the scanner on as many cars as you want, and troubleshoot as many issues during the period that you have or you rent the scanner for. Uh, one thing I'd recommend as well: uh, instead of going to the individual control units, you can go to Quick Scan, and this goes through all the control units on the car and transmission and stability control. It's good sometimes to take a, a big picture of what's going on. Um, and then once this is complete, you'll have these codes and then descriptions on what's going on, but it goes through every control unit on the car. So that's it. Um, that's how you can troubleshoot a Mercedes that shows aromatic after driving for a little bit. Thank you for watching Mechanic, where you can be the mechanic.